Hey Team Bio, welcome to your second screencast, Intro to Ecology, uh, and the 10% trophic rule. Okay, last screencast was all about energy and nutrients, how energy flows through the ecosystem, and we need a constant supply of it. Our supply of energy is coming from the sun, for the most part, and nutrients flow around the ecosystem. They are recycled. So the same atoms that made up the dinosaurs also make up you. Um, okay, today's screencast is going to be all about how energy is actually flowing through the ecosystem and the 10% trophic rule. We'll get there. Okay, so first of all, this depicts a food chain. I'm sure you all have seen a food chain before. In this food chain, we've got a very simplified food chain where we have a sunflower that is being eaten by a grasshopper, which is eaten, being eaten by a mouse, which is being eaten by a hawk. Um, so that's our simplified food chain. You know from last night's screencast that the very bottom layer of the food chain, we call these autotrophs because they are self-feeders. They perform photosynthesis and they build the organic compounds that make up their bodies uh, using that chemical reaction. Everything above the autotrophs are the heterotrophs. And they are eating others. So all heterotrophs require food in the form of consuming another living organism in order to be alive. Um, okay, so none of that's new. Uh, something that I'm, we're going to add a little bit more detail to this food chain here. Um, we're going to create what's called trophic levels. And we're going to give those different trophic levels names. Okay, so our first trophic level is level number one. And these, this is called primary producers. I guess you could also just say producers. Um, so our primary producers are doing photosynthesis and they are being consumed by the second level, all of the vegetarians in the ecosystem. These are our primary consumers. Um, so kind of confusing. The second level is the primary consumer. The third level of trophic level are our secondary consumers. Secondary consumers eat the primary consumers. And then the fourth trophic level in our system is called the tertiary consumers. And unsurprisingly, the tertiary consumers consume the secondary consumers. Uh, okay, so a few definitions to get through before we jump into the 10% trophic rule. First of all, um, primary productivity. It's just a fancy way of saying the total amount of sugar produced by photosynthesis. Um, okay, so our, our autotrophs, our primary producers, perform photosynthesis and they, uh, they basically set the energy budget for the entire ecosystem. They determine how much primary productivity happens um, based on how much sugar they're able to produce via photosynthesis. So this primary productivity, this kind of sets the energy budget for the ecosystem. Uh, 
Um, because photosynthesis is the way that light energy, or I guess I should say visible light, is converted to chemical energy. organic compounds, compounds that contain carbon. Okay, so our primary producers are, they're setting the energy budget for the ecosystem. The ecosystem only has as much energy available to it as these autotrophs are able to convert from the sun into chemical energy. Um, okay, and um, so plants create what's called uh, biomass. They take um, carbon dioxide from the air and they turn it into glucose via photosynthesis. Um, so, and we can measure the amount of biomass. Um, at every level. The way that you can measure biomass is by dehydrating something, like letting all the water uh, evaporate out of it, and then burning it. You can calculate the amount of biomass based on the amount of heat that is released through burning that thing. Um, we are constantly taking our own biomass and burning it. So if you feel the back of your neck right now, you'll feel that your back of your neck is warm. You can feel the heat that's being released as you convert your own body's biomass and um, back into carbon dioxide that you exhale and you release heat in the process. Um, if you don't eat more food, you'll burn out. You won't have any more energy to burn. Um, so uh, biomass is, gives us a measure of the total amount of chemical energy that is at any level in the ecosystem, and it all enters the ecosystem through primary productivity. Okay, so those are kind of the, the terms um, that are important to define before we talk about the 10% rule, which I'm going to give you right now. Okay, so the 10% trophic rule. is as follows. Every time you move up a trophic level, only 10% of the chemical energy remains. Ninety percent is lost as heat. Okay. So let's talk about what that actually looks like in our very simple um, ecosystem. Okay, we'll start with the grasshoppers. Um, the biomass of the grasshoppers, as you can see, is 1,000 joules of energy. It's contained within all the bodies of these grasshoppers. Now, these grasshoppers, in order to survive, um, actually had to eat 10,000 joules of sunflowers. Let's just say they had to eat 10,000 sunflowers. We'll, we'll just make everything, the body of everything, one jewel here. Um, so, and even though these grasshoppers in our, our second trophic level, our primary consumers, um, even though they consumed 10,000 joules of sunflowers, only 1,000 joules of that energy is trapped in their body as chemical energy. In order to live and hop around and do their grasshoppery thing, they were radiating out heat all the time. And so this giant 90% of all this energy that they consumed 
was lost as they just lived their lives. Okay, we move up another trophic level to our secondary consumers, the field mice that are eating the grasshoppers. You can see now that only 10% of the 1,000 joules that were in the grasshoppers remains in the level of the field mice. If we were to take all the bodies of the field mice and burn them all up, we'd see only 100 joules of, of chemical energy remain at this trophic level. And again, it's because the field mice are running around bopping things on the head and releasing heat as they do so. Um, okay, we move up one more trophic level to the level of the hawk. Again, you can see that even though the hawk had to eat 100 joules of field mice, only 10% of that, so 10 joules, was passed on to the body of the hawk because the hawk, just like the field mouse and the grasshopper and also the plants, is releasing energy as heat. Now, there could be something that eats the hawk, but if that was the case, there would only be a teeny tiny sliver of energy left at the tippity top. It would be one, we'd have to make this so tiny, one joule of energy left at the top for some organism. And so this is why food chains end. Because when you get to a trophic level, um, let's say in our ecosystem, it would be so inefficient to eat hawks. You'd have to have so many sunflowers that there's just not enough energy uh, to support another organism um, beyond the hawk uh, in this ecosystem. Now, if you were to go to a different ecosystem, for example, the rainforest, there's more primary productivity happening there. There are more autotrophs. So if this bucket of energy at the bottom is larger, then the trophic pyramid can get taller. Um, but this is the reason why top predators, for example, usually uh, have giant territories, like lions have these massive territories that they uh, reign over. And um, it's because you need so much energy in the plant level to support all the antelopes, you know, to eat higher up on trophic levels. Okay, so I guess another way to think about this is in order to add um, 10 more joules of energy at the hawk, so in order to add another hawk to the system, we would have to add 10,000 more plants to the system. Okay, that's all, 10% trophic rule.